and the camera and the wire director is also presenting on landscaping. Um, just to make you aware, these are, because we've divided up uh, Histon Road into two sections, north and south, um, obviously we, we end up repeating very similar presentations on both, because uh, we have different representatives. I don't know if we could just have a hands up to understand how many people came last week's to the southern section. So, so would people be happy, just to make you aware, that we're happy to run through those presentations essentially again for those that, that weren't here, but you, you know, they will be quite similar to, to what you saw last week, but it might be a helpful reminder before we start the session. Um, then we're going to a discussion session, which will break out into our first workshop, um, and that's looking at the options for side road junctions, crossings, and bus stop locations. So those that were here last week were kind of similar format. So what we've done is we've started the plans together at the moment to give you the, the run of the road section we're looking at, so it's easy to follow. If you could use the pens on the table, um, I'm focusing also on, the, on bus stops and crossings particularly, um, and I'll, I'll go back through this uh, just before we break into the session. Um, you'll see there's some photos indicating those bus stop locations and, and crossings. We've got some GIS plans locating them where they are on the, on the route. Um, on some of the other sessions, obviously, we've looked at cross sections of different elements, but what we've tried to do is break down these workshops into different elements. So, this is the key subjects we'd like to get your thoughts on today. In other workshops, we move on to other, other topics. So, anything you could stay as a group focused on those areas, and that helps us pull it all together. Um, we'll then have a break. Again, apologies that we haven't got hot drinks this time. Um, the second session will then discussion around landscape and street furniture, where there's an ability for planting, kind of the plants you'd like to see, where there's particular elements, where we can make more of that. On the back of Andy's uh, presentation, that should help generate hopefully some ideas. Then, as we've done in the other workshops, we've looked to have a feedback session. So you'll see on each of your tables there's a there's a form there with three design ideas, three design concerns, um, and we'll have a, a, each table can present on those, uh, which we'll collect up. Um, you've got a facilitator on each of your tables to help kind of uh, help direct conversations a little bit and um, keep, keep all your ideas on the plans that are there and make sure that we collect those up so we don't miss any of your ideas you're generating uh, this evening. Um, so just uh, as, as Ryan was done, just running you through uh, the initial objectives um, that were set out for Histon Road at the beginning of the scheme. Um, they were to provide comprehensive priority for buses in both directions, wherever practical. Uh, additional capacity for sustainable trips to employment education sites, enable and increase in bus patronage and new services, uh, safer and more convenient routes for cycling and walking, maintain and reduce traffic levels, and enhance the environment, streetscape, and air quality. So, in terms of when you're providing your feedback and looking at those, those are the sort of areas where, where we're looking to, uh, to make sure the scheme is a success. Um, so, I'll pass you over to Glenn Higgs, who will talk you through this section of the road in terms of some of the elements. Uh, of design we'll be discussing this evening. Good evening everyone. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and skip through these very quickly. Because we covered them last time, almost all the slides are exactly the same, and I think so the summary slide at the end that really is, is bespoke to this half of the column. So, um, so unless anyone wants me to dwell on anything, I'll skip by them much quicker than I did last time. So obviously here's the, here's the half we covered this time, and my presentation uh, relates to these three um, aspects of design in terms of looking at the detail and for bus stops and crossings, also their location, suitable locations. Um, so side roads, um, design of side roads. Um, there's different ways you do it. Um, the, the current plans show raised tables, raised entries. Here's an example of one. Um, which use quite high quality materials, but this is just about um, facilitating pedestrian movement, it doesn't really uh, take into account cyclists. So, um, there's a, a couple of examples of ways that side roads take cyclists uh, across the road uh, in different ways, and the benefits of both are the comments of both, um, and there they are. Um, so, that's the, the, the kind of um, the benefits of that particular type. They're all alternative. Um, ways of getting cyclists and pedestrians across the road as well. Here's an example of a continuous crossing or Copenhagen crossing uh, in, in Clapham. Um, there's a close-up of it. Um, here's, a, here's another one, same part of, um, of London. Um, this is just a, a slight different uh, uh, type of design. There's some other features there as well, trees and planting. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, didn't take into account cyclists for those uh, continuous crossings. Um, 
um, Green End Road uh, has uh, a way of getting cyclists across where they're um, pulled back from the um, main road. And here's an example on the continent where it's a similar type of design, looks a bit different, the way it's treated, and the setbacks not as far. Here's one where the setbacks even less. Um, but for Histon Road, um, we probably haven't got the space to take cyclists back away from the road before they come to the side road. So we probably look at more taking them in front of the um, giveaway line at the side road, um, which is the way it's done where there's less space for another junction on Green and Road, we've shown that, which is um, more similar to uh, one of those first photos I showed there. This is uh, Ocean Road in Brighton. And there's another way of doing it, that's Waltham Forest, similar thing, but this is actually next to uh, a continuous uh, crossing type arrangement there, so it combines the two. So that's um, a side road, so bus stops. Um, here's here's a, a blow up of two, two of the bus, bus stops on the route, but all this is showing really that um, it's a pretty consistent um, way of treatment at the moment. That's, that's the way it's proposed for the bus stops, which is this shared uh, use area. Um, so there is a picture or a, 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 a 3D um, visualization of what, what those look like. Uh, where the cyclist doesn't share that shared use area. It's got its pros and cons. Um, the cons being you, know, you have that potential for pedestrian cyclist conflict. It's over in a wider area than you might get in other types of design. Minimum width we're saying is about four metres for that kind of road. Here's an alternative it's a bus stop bypass um, where cyclists run uh, alongside the footway in between the bus and the uh, uh, pedestrians are going along the road. This has pros and cons as well. Um, the cons being that people that are getting on and off buses have to step into the path of this uh, cycle lane. So there's a question of priorities and uncertainty of priorities. Um, 3.5 metres is the minimum width for that. Here's a similar kind of arrangement, but this time there's a, a giveaway line there. So that's indicating the cycle should stop. Um, is, is, how all that would work is, is, another, um, is another question, but it's just showing you what the range of alternative design, designs have there are. Um, keeping sites on carriageway through the stop is, is another option. Um, again, it's got pros and cons. All this is about you know, what's the best uh, type of arrangement in that situation, given that cycle flow, pedestrian flow. What, where the movement is and uh, how that relates to um, the frequency of buses as well and vehicles. Um, then what, what I showed last time was that th whilst this isn't a conventional arrangement, you know, conceivably there is an alternative which is to bring the cycle lane to the back of the footway as it approaches the uh, bus stop. But again, this has its own uh, issues which is getting um, pedestrians crossing over the path of cyclists, vice versa and also taking cyclists close to where people would come out of their driveways. Um, finally, you've got floating bus stop um, concept, which um, many of you will be familiar with, um, but this requires a minimum width of about 5.5 metres, um, which I'll come to show you. In this section of the route, we, we really haven't got that width with the current uh, configuration. <coughs> so that's bus stops on right. crossings. Sorry, but yes. are you going to fit these in, in Eastern Road? 3.5, 4 metres, 5.5, they're not going to fit these ideas, so why bother? For, for, for you which ones? You want to fit these bus stops into Eastern Road. There's no really room on the existing footprint of the road. And I bought this up last time, and I'm surprised it's still pushing these ideas. Well, well there's two, two things here. One is, this is, this is a workshop, and it's a series of workshops. We're not amending the designs between the workshops, so we're still talking about the same plans. We get a collection of all the comments and ideas, you know, throughout the workshops, and then it, it, there's a process, right or wrong, this is the process where it goes to, through to the LLF, and then it goes to the council board, and it's then these decisions made as to... These ideas are not going to work, so why push them? The, the point of the workshop, like the other workshops, is to discuss amongst the tables whether, whether people think, some people think certain things work, some people think Everyone's going to have different ideas, and it's, it's to get A, to get those ideas down on paper and to hear about them, but B, to understand how much uh, commonality there are on all these different types of ideas. None That's of the ideas work, so you're wasting your time, you're wasting my time. Some of the people here may uh, have 
ideas on how it could be amended to make it work, whether that should work already. So I, I, I don't know, but I'm not sure if, if, if that idea is shared by everyone. The purpose of the workshop is to find that out. Well, can I say something? After the consultation, have actually a city deal scrapped all the floating bus stops on Eastern Road? Well, the, the resolution actually was, for his note, that we shouldn't be considering floating bus stops. Right, so why waste our time with this? Well, well, I only wasted about uh, five seconds talking about floating bus stops, and that was just to say, in this park, this road, there isn't a width. Waste so, time, uh, move on. We let them into the request station yes. and then end the I was going to skip through quickly, so you know, that's, that was my intention. So, so crossings, different types of crossings, no control, which are the kind of things you see out on the street uh, all the time. Uh, control crossings, you also see on the street, there's different types. Um, control crossings and then control, there's different types. Here's the different types, you'll be familiar with, uh, with these anyway. Um, and they're for pedestrians, then you get uh, ones that are for pedestrians and cyclists, and they're marked as common. The one on the left there was uh, only introduced by law fairly recently. So different types of crossings, um, and here's, here's a summary which is the bespoke part for this park group. So, um, Three crossings, the one on the south is the new one, proposed one. Um, the one on the north is also proposed, that's a two cones, a cyclist pedestrians, one of the, the other two are just pedestrians. And there's three signalised junctions, the point is that all these will have crossings. Um, there's six uh, bus stops, the, the configuration has been switched around slightly for some of them. Um, but there they are, and that's the width that you have for reference by those bus stops. So when I was going through the different options with the minimum widths, that gives you uh, an idea of what's possible. And as I said, they're narrow at those points. May I just ask a quick question? Mm. You talked about bus stops and you talked about crosses. Now I do believe there has to be a certain amount of space between the two. Would this design be practical? So many crossings against bus stops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also on corners, you can't. You, I know you can't have a corner and a bus stop for 400 yards. That's the rules and regulations. No, you can only have bus stops. I mean, they can't be too like a crossing. You can't have them too close to the corner because yeah. if you turn out the corner, you're going to be on it before you know it. But no, it's about for a crossing. It's um, it's about 10 meters. It's got to, it's got to be inside the road for. Yeah, but it's 400 meters. Roughly, generally, is a rule between the stops because that gives people, I think, it's about five minute, no more than about five minute walk times. So, between every bus stop. Yeah. Okay, so unless anyone's got any more uh, pressing questions, um, I'll, uh, I'll hand over. Yeah, you're talking about the crossings and you've got the lower two bus stops. Where would the crossing be then? Sorry, say that. You've got the two lower bus stops, right? Got two, three sets of bus stops. Yeah. Where would the crossing be on the lower set of bus stops? This is a proposal for a crossing at that point from the Borodale uh, Road. Wait, that's, that's the crossing there, that's the proposed crossing. Okay. So it's just south. Yeah, okay. Just south. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's part of the discussion. You know, each site sees bus stops in a different location. Well, crossings. Some plans, you might see crossings at different places or moves shifting slightly. That's what we're able to capture as part of this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. We're going to Andy Hughes, another of our directors, who can talk you through uh, answering. Yeah. These are similar slides to last week um, to look a little bit at uh, some of the opportunities for uh, public realm and green landscaping enhancements uh, along uh, this uh, section that we're dealing with tonight. Um, some of the areas I want to uh, uh, consider, uh, where could we intervene and what would the appropriate level of intervention be? Do we look at a regular or an irregular street form, landscape planting trees, are there opportunities for showing, illustrating uh, 
uh, the sustainable urban drainage characters if we think that's appropriate. Uh, and also that hard, soft landscape and balanced street furniture lines and signs. Uh, and what I've got here, if you weren't here last week, uh, is a lot of images from different towns and cities uh, in this country around Europe. Some of them are different scales, different size streets, but it's really to generate some food for thought uh, about what uh, could be done in some of those spaces uh, that uh, will uh, present uh, themselves. Uh, there aren't many uh, when we look at this northern section. Uh, you know, there are some uh, uh, green spaces, you know, at the, the junctions here and here. This one widens out here and here as well. Uh, and clearly, as we get up to the top, there might be some opportunities, very small ones here. So, unlike some of the other sections we've looked at, there isn't that much uh, uh, place for uh, some of these enhancements. But needless to say, we should still certainly consider uh, what could be appropriate. And it's this kind of thing, you know, when we take uh, road space uh, uh, you know, back, this is in London, uh, is it used for tree planting, for, uh, you know, for seating, for other things? Uh, you know, what are those things that you think would be appropriate? Is it for cycle parking? Uh, is it about just places where people can sit out uh, and uh, you know, uh, enjoy uh, the environment? Uh, where can we put trees in? Uh, I think at this stage, we haven't got all the utilities information, so we want to see the aspirations for tree planting. Uh, even if the utilities are in the way, it can still be done. This is on Farringdon Road, where trees and planters were actually used to green the street. Uh, and then are there other opportunities that may present themselves? Is it for uh, you know, businesses uh, to spill out, or for things to pop up and happen? Uh, as I say, not many opportunities along here, but we did talk about this last week as well. Uh, or is it uh, you know, for play space, uh, or uh, not for Russian T-34 tanks, but this is an art installation, uh, you know, that actually uh, the community come along and repaint every six months uh, and various photo shoots take place and it's become a destination in its own right. Uh, so are there opportunities for art or sculpture that would be appropriate here? What should the street be like? Is it about, uh, 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 if it's tree line, is that regular or reg irregular? Uh, here's a, you know, a regular pattern with trees placed uh, you know, next to each other. Uh, here's an irregular one where they're more random. You know, what do you feel the character this part of Piston Road should be. Uh, and then where we put in uh, you know, crossings, are they done at a, a level uh, uh, in, you know, uh, way, as, as Ben illustrated, or are they curbs? Uh, you know, are the crossings that go in controlled and designated with lights, or are they like these, which are called courtesy crossings, a little bit less controlled? Be good to hear your thoughts on that as well. Of course, uh, where those opportunities, opportunities present themselves, you know, can we get uh, more landscaping, more greenery in, more trees in? Uh, you know, it's been done at uh, different scales. This is Nottingham City Centre as it was before, quite traffic dominated. This is the same junction now, we're planting down the middle, planting at the edges, trees, cycle parking. Of course, it's a wider section, you know, we're more limited here, but how do we want to put these things in? We spoke a little bit last week about how near the trees be. We're assuming about a metre next to the highway, as you see here, is probably about right. Other places that have uh, you know, transformed, Birmingham City Centre is now this. Again, with uh, you know, quite mature trees as they've grown up, but you know, uh, other bits of street furniture as appropriate. Uh, this was down in Taunton, smaller scale, um, but they wanted to make this junction into a better place, so they put uh, you know, stone sets in, they took away the guard railing and the keep left bollards, they put less in uh, to try and make it feel a little bit more pedestrian friendly. Uh, and then larger scale, this is Liverpool, uh, where they planted actually quite mature trees. Uh, to get an instant boulevard effect. Uh, these are the edges, again, about a metre or so distance to, uh, to where they're planted. Sustainable urban drainage uh, has been brought up in the past at these sessions. Is that something we could consider here? We clearly haven't got this sort of space to put in large swales, uh, but could we do things that are more uh, uh, compact uh, to illustrate that there is serviceable drainage taking place here? Uh, these are uh, new developments, you know, it's only you know, 500 mil wide, half a metre wide to actually illustrate that is going on. Is that something that you feel would be uh, uh, good to incorporate here? Uh, and that balance between hard and soft landscaping is, is important. Uh, of course trees have a huge impact on, on softening the street. Uh, you know, these are similar roads, this one has no trees and is very different in nature to, to this one here. Uh, the, the crossings, as Glenn has mentioned, you know, is there a strategy to provide for level uh, routes for pedestrians on the side streets, as was done here in, in the Walworth Road, uh, and, and of course, as per Copenhagen. Uh, 
campaign. Uh, but could we think about it being greener where we've got those opportunities to bring the verges back in uh, and tree planting uh, you know, to really soften the street as much as possible? Uh, and then finally, I think just some thought about street furniture. There will need to be uh, you know, some furniture along here, whether it's lighting columns or signs or, or benches or cycle parking. Uh, is that uh, done uh, in a, a, a more traditional way? Uh, do we put all the signs and lines that come with that? This was a scheme down in New Malden where they put, obviously, lighting columns down the middle of the highway then the road safety auditor decided to put white lines down here and bollards and all these white lines and you know, signs to tell people which side of the road to drive on. Uh, but in Germany, very similar scheme, they put none of that in because they actually felt it looked better without that sort of stuff. But what are your thoughts? Do you want this to be engineered in a more traditional way with all that paraphernalia or should it be uh, less so, should it be uh, more uh, you know, landscape focused? Uh, and then, um, what sort of style? Uh, you know, is, uh, you know, here's very modern contemporary lighting columns and bollards and even you know, modern uh, trees in terms of how they've been uh, dealt with. Is that appropriate here? Uh, uh, you know, again, modern benches, uh, modern signage, modern tree planting. Or is it more, you know, something that looks a little bit more traditional, like it's been there for uh, you know, the centuries uh, or, or you know, as long as the street has been? It'd be good to hear your thoughts about you know, what are those Stars that might be appropriate. This was Barry Edmonds, they went for a very bespoke, you know, uh, 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 traditional looking lighting columns, bespoke pollards, you know, that had a traditional feel, was made of stone, and, you know, to reflect the character of the place. And that comes right through to, you know, how we deal with the highway. You know, do we uh, keep the cycle lanes quite simple, like this? Uh, do we want to paint them bright blue? Uh, this sort of gives me a headache, but, you know, maybe that's what you feel is right for Cambridge. Uh, or is it more, you know, uh, low key or really low key? Uh, you know, here in Bilbao, just done with um, small uh, stainless steel discs. Um, so, certainly yes. That would seem foolish to do that. So, so, that is so, a so what's suggested? 
I just, when um, maintenance, the subject of maintenance was mentioned, um, you know, one idea that perhaps could be contributed tonight is the idea of a commuted sum um, towards the maintenance of whatever is put in at a later date. Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, well, no, I, I was just trying to deal with the, with the point about ma maintenance because the county council's maintenance budget has been so slashed that you know there's almost nothing there. Yes, no, it's a good question. Um, it, 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 it could be that a decision is made that some of the city deal money is, you know, a commuted sum given to maintenance for X number of years to actually, you know, ensure that there is money there to maintain what's put in. That's all I'm to say. Right, without further ado then, so uh, we can capture as much as we can of what's left of the session. Um, if I just go back to, to remind you what we'd like to undertake. Right, so if we take the first 15 minutes, um, and aim to capture your thoughts um, on options on the side road junction treatments. So some of those uh, options that then identified in terms of the, the side roads coming into Histon Road, how would you like those dealt with um, in consideration of their cycling, walking, uh, going across those? Who should have the priority at those points? Um, you know, the sort of tiles that we've seen should be a raised crossing, should be very much that the cars, you know, the priority there, we'd like to get your thoughts on that. In terms of crossing locations and bus stops, as we show you've got a, a, a GIS plan there which indicates again clarifies where they are. You've got photos of the current existing situation taken from uh, Google um, and you've got the current scheme as it stands at the moment um, with those locations. If you feel those bus stops need to be moved or crossings relocated elsewhere, if you feel there should be more or maybe less, We'd uh, really appreciate your thoughts on that. So if we could take the first 50 minutes to discuss those in your groups and capture those ideas uh, on this section of the road, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you.